Right algebra, we've got um, unit one, day five, rewriting equations and formulas, and that's book section 1.5. And there's some really good practice on IXL. So if you have forgotten your password, um, there are uh, orange cards up on my desk. Just ask the sub for one so you can practice that. Um, that's going to be best, is just continuing practicing with these, okay? An equation that has two or more variables is called a literal equation, okay? So we solved this little equation. So I put this here, because this is kind of like what the book shows, step by step, word by, like it, it gives you words, okay? So, and I'll do it off the side so you can see how I would do it. So already we've got, and I don't know why this is so tiny. There we go. <laughs> here we are. So 3y plus 4x equals nine, and we want to solve for y. All right, so I'll do it off to the side, like I said. Plus 4x equals 9. Okay, um, so in my head, I think, well, I've got to box that variable term, right? And like they do, they subtract 4x from both sides, right? Because I can move that term just like that. And I can't combine those two. So then I've got 3y equals 9 minus 4x, right? So they subtracted it from both sides. Okay, um, yep, and then they simplified it. Okay, um, now right here, we're gonna divide each side by three because that's multiplying, divide by three, divide by three, and y equals, and they simplify it. You've got to divide all of the terms by three. Okay, so you might think of this, I'm gonna show you over here, oh, sorry, I'm gonna show you over here how else you might think of this. You might think of um, when you've got, oops, 9 minus 4x, you're going to take each term and divide by 3. Okay, that's essentially what you're doing. So if you notice, 3 divided by 9, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and negative 4x divided by 3 is negative 4 thirds x. Okay, it's kind of nice just to um, divide the numbers and leave it in proper. Trust me, that's going to help with our next couple of units, actually in two units, okay, when we start functions. So here's rewritten another one. Um, sorry. So we've got 3y equals 3x plus 5xz for x. Now this one's a lot different, okay? So if you notice, x is in two different spots, okay? So you're going to do something that you haven't really done with variables at all yet but it's kind of like the opposite of distribution. So I'm gonna take it out. So they call this distributive property, right? They're gonna take it out, okay? Does that make sense? So now if you take the x out of this term, you've got three, and if you take the x out of this term, you've got five z, all right? So now I've got, again, I'm solving for x, okay? So that's multiplying, right? So I've got all of this, I can just divide it. Right, look at everything in my parentheses, and if I divide this side by all of that in parentheses, I divide that side. And y, x equals y divided by the sum of 3 and 5 times z. E. Okay? All right. Um, let's do this. Solve for y. Oh, sorry. I can't really see. So I'm solving for y. Right. I'm just in the habit of doing that, so I'm going to box that variable term, right? And I'm going to add the x. The x can get away, right? So then let's simplify. 3y equals 9 plus x, right? And I'm still not solved for y, so I'm going to get 3 away from it. Again, I can divide each term by 3, or I can divide the entire term by 3. And if you want to see that both ways, then I'll show you. doesn't matter, okay? Y equals uh, nine divided by three is three. And I'm gonna treat that like it's a one because I wanna do one third X. I can do X over three and that's fine, but it's gonna be nice, like I said, in unit three, you're gonna wanna see that one third, okay? So one third X, okay? 
All right, solving for y again. Okay, so here I've got it in two different places. So remember, I have to do the distributive property. So I'm going to pull the y, and if I pull the y out of this first term, I've got a 2 left. Okay, let's drop that plus sign. If I pull the y out of this one, I only have the k left. And that equals m. If you want to check your work, distribute it back in. And those two are multiplying, right? And so I can take this whole entire everything in the parentheses and divide 2 plus k. And if I divide this side by 2 plus k, then I divide this side by 2 plus k. So y equals m divided by 2 plus k. All right. And over here, again, we're solving for y. All right. Um, there are two terms, but they're not alone, right? Like over here, they were the only two terms. So I'm going to, so essentially you don't have to do this, but I'm going to single those out, right? They're not alone, so let's get rid of that 3 by subtracting 3. Okay? So 5, I do not have enough room here, so I'm going to get rid of that line. 5y minus k y equals x minus 3. Okay, so now I have two terms, only two terms, with the same variable that I want to single out, that I want to solve for. And so I want to do the distributive property, right? So if I take a y out, that's 5 left. And if I take a y out, it's negative k is left. Equals x minus 3. All right, now see if you can do the next step on your own. Press pause. And what would you do? If you had to solve for y here, what would you do? Okay, hopefully you paused. You recognize that that's multiplying. So you would divide 5 minus k. And you would divide 5 minus k. And y equals x minus 3 over 5 minus k. Okay. All right. So here's the next one. So now we've got... <clears throat> Um, a formula shows how one variable is related to one or more other variables. A formula is a type of literal equation. So a formula for the surface area S of a rectangular prism is S equals 2 times L times W plus 2 times length times height plus 2 times width times height, right? And solve the formula for L, All right? So here they did that. Let's go through. So what do you recognize? Um, so I'm going to make this a little bigger just in case. Um, w plus w -H. All right, ready? So I have two L's, but on that right side, they're not alone, right? Those are not alone yet, so let's get rid of the two WH. Okay, and if I subtract from one side, then I subtract the other, and that's what they do here. Okay, they subtract to WH, subtract to WH. Okay, and then you've got S minus 2WH equals 2LW plus 2LH. All right. Okay, now you're going to use the distributive property, right? And so a distributive property, pull out the L from those two terms on the right. All right, they both have an L. All right, so if I pull out the L... Oops, not changing the sign. Pull out the L. If I take out the L, I've got two W left. If I take out the L, I've got two H left. You can distribute and make sure you get the same thing back. And since that's multiplying, so ready? Um, what are we here? So since that's multiplying, we divide everything in the parentheses. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. All right? So I'll do that here again if I'm going too slow, speed up. If I'm going too fast, slow down. 2w plus 2h. So my length is just like what they said there. All right? All right. Um, and the reason you might want to do this is maybe you know all of the other measurements but the length. In which case then I can plug in, um, like let's do here. If I know... The surface area and the width and the height then I can plug those in and just solve that otherwise I've got to do just a little more work if I don't know the length right because then I've got to figure out how to get those variables away so it's a lot easier <clears throat> knowing how to solve for variables all right so we want to solve for h here I'm gonna make it a little bigger uh, a equals 
is negative one half base times height. Okay, so height's not alone, but I can't really move those together because of that fraction, right? So we're multiplying because the opposite of multiplying B is dividing, but the opposite of multiplying a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal, right? So negative two over one, which is just negative two. <clears throat> and if I multiply that side, then I multiply this side. So those cancel, right? So now I've got, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move this over there. For some reason, this printed off really small. Okay. So I've got negative two A equals base times height, right? And if I wanna solve for the height, divide by the base, divide by the base. And so my height equals negative two A all divided by the base. All right, surface area of a cone, and solve for L. All right, so S equals pi R squared plus pi R L. And we're solving for L. Did I write it correctly? S equals pi R squared. Okay, um, so there is only one term with that L. So let's subtract this pi R squared minus pi r squared. So s minus pi r squared is equal to pi r l, right? And so if I'm solving for l, those two are multiplying, so I would divide pi r. I would divide pi r. And I can't reduce this because this isn't just pi. This is pi times r squared and after being subtracted. So it's, I can't reduce this at all. So my length is just s minus pi r squared over pi r. And if you've got variables that are capitalized, keep them capitalized. And if you've got them lowercase, keep them lowercase. Sorry, I went off the screen there. <coughs> okay. So if you need to write this down and then go back and listen, go for it. I apologize. All right. Ready? This one we'll use a lot. This one comes up in tests throughout the year. So it's really important to know how to manipulate these variables, okay? And five ninths. So if we want to solve, I'm going to write this again, just a little bit bigger. Five ninths F minus 32. All right, so remember this is solving for F. We've got to unfold this problem, right? So we work backwards from PERMDAS. So parentheses can't happen first, they happen last, right? So since that's multiplying, we do the opposite, and the opposite of multiplying by a fraction is multiplying by the reciprocal, right? And if I multiply that side, then I multiply this side. Okay, those cancel. So 9 fifths C is equal to F minus 32, right? Okay, add 32, and add 32. So we've got 9 fifths C plus 32, because they're not like terms, this does not have a variable. This one does, equals F, I can't combine them. There we go. So again, like I said, go to the hyperdoc and I put in the IXL practice that you can do for this. And don't forget to do your homework.